Okay, so I just had to stop and record to cloud instead. So now, um, today we want to um, talk about setting up DHIS2 application stack in, in, on an offline server. Um, that is a server that, that doesn't have um, external access uh, to internet. And um, to proceed with that, we will um, talk about um, these packages that we need um, to set up our application. Um, our stack has, um, you know, the, the DHIS2 application itself has uh, Tomcat 9, and, and 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 on top of Tomcat 9 server, you have um, DHIS2 .wav file. So that Tomcat server is going to be serving that uh, WAV file, and Munin, uh, sorry, loaded monitoring as well. And then you have Postgres. That means you that implies that you you will have to get Postgres uh, packages in in your system, and and if you plug in other monitoring tools like Munin or Subix, then you will need to manage those packages also within your system. <clears throat> so our standard install normally is, is built on, on top of LXD. And for that, um, for that, uh, it means you need to to install LXD on whatever you you have your DHIS2 installation. So, and if you're dealing with uh, Ubuntu 18.04, 19.04, or 20, sorry, 18, 20, 22, then normally that is packaged with um, Snap, into Snap. So that means you have two package uh, management systems in your, in your server, one is apt and another one is snap. So why, why do we need internet uh, to, to be there, I mean, in the servers? Like for instance, our, our tools that we have out there, those we're using Ansible or even um, the shell scripts that we have, uh, they do not work if you don't, not, you don't have internet in your server. So that means um, for you to run those scripts, you you will you will need to have internet connection. Reasons is because for LXD to build your container, it it needs to it, it starts from somewhere. It needs it needs an, a base image to start from, and those image normally are not are not um, available on your on your local system, at least when you've not downloaded them. So what happens is that that is downloaded. I mean, the container image is downloaded from the remote and then container is built from that image. And then packages required now will be, will be installed into um, the same image that you get from the remote. That is at least what happens when you run Ansible scripts that we have. Previous uh, previous call we talked about LXD in detailed uh, in detailed and and we talked about images how you can manage those images, and we explored and and realized that those images are normally uh, hosted somewhere that you you download them from some remote and we can even list on my terminal here image list. Uh, remote list. So we have remotes here. We have um, images remote, and then we have Ubuntu daily remote and Ubuntu um, Ubuntu remote. So normally images are downloaded from this remote. They are hosted somewhere, some remote remote uh, image repository, and they are downloaded prior to the installation. That is one of the reasons why you need in, in, um, you need internet access on your server, and then. Uh, um, for you to build a working DHS2 um, application stack, then you need to get Tomcat somewhere, you need to get um, Postgres 
packages somewhere, you need to get proxy that is in the next order patches somewhere, you know, all those packages that you need. So you will need uh, apt. And what is apt? It's a package management system. And um, apt also has a local cache. It has local cache. Um, when you, you issue a command like sudo apt update something, then it, it refreshes your local cache ensuring that it has all the, um, the repository, it refreshes and ensures that your sources list um, initiated, you know, something like that. And then when you say you issue a command like sudo apt upgrade, then it checks what you have on your local cache. And then it, 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 it tries to upgrade and get latest versions and security patches into your system. And when you install, a package like uh, say for instance vim then it tries to check um, within your local cache if that package is available and if it is not it it connects to your remote apt repositories and it downloads that package and then it installs into your into your system so so when we are faced with this um, problem that we are talking about today where you don't have internet that that means you you don't have um, leeway of, of of getting to download these images from uh, you know sorry it can be the images for LXD containers or even these packages from somewhere else you know you need to prepare yourself to 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 get uh, these packages um, say into your laptop and then install them into the system whatever you're building your DHS two right so. That means uh, you have two options of, of, of approaching this. One is you could prepare your containers prior to the actual install, where you, you set up DHIS2 on an, an environment where you have in, internet connection. Um, that is, you build the containers plus all the packages in an environment where you have internet. And that means you will, you, you're going to install all the required packages into the independent containers. You can even use the tools. You can use, you can use the tools there um, because you can, that can be automated. When, when you have internet connection, it can be automated. And then after uh, you have uh, got all your, your containers with you, with all the packages that are required, you can export and then import on um, on whatever you want to set up your DHS to. So we, we're gonna move quick into the demonstration, see how we can tackle these um, problems at hand. And I will prepare a, a, an instance which which is offline, doesn't which doesn't have internet access completely, and see how we can set up a few items there and see how we can set up DHS2 there, uh, at least uh, with one of the approaches, you know, we can use containers or get the packages with us. Dito, could I make a quick comment before you go on? Yes. Just thinking about cases which has happened to me where I've been in this situation where, where people want to install and the, there's no internet there. There's actually two, two reasons why it happens. I mean, one is sometimes you find in particularly very strongly regulated government data centers. I think you were talking the other week about, about having that issue in Jordan, for example, mm. where you don't, you, you get blocked from using outgoing HTTP. But I think the other case is maybe even more common when you're installing in a local data center, it's not that you're banned or barred from using the internet somehow. It's simply that the internet connection is very weak and it's actually not practical to be downloading lots of packages. That's something I've come across quite a bit working yeah. in, in, in physical data centers, often in places yeah. where the connectivity is not always fantastic. Um, I don't know if anyone else has got similar experiences. Maybe Stephen in in no. in South Sudan. Were you working in South Sudan? No, in the in the main Sudan. In the main Sudan, in, yeah. In had, the main uh, Sudan. Yeah. 
because of uh, restrictions, these uh, 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 sanctions and the like, the so internet was only so I think, were too much restricted. And the, the connections were not going out of the out of Sudan to, to pull to pull out those uh, packages into the server. Mm, the sanctions are another issue. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Tito, it's, it, it it happens quite a bit. So this this scenario dis, you're describing is is definitely an interesting one. Let mm -hmm. me not interrupt you further. Okay. So I will prepare two servers here. One is, is an online server where, where we prepare ourselves, you know, just an environment where we prepare uh, and download the packages. And, and in, in a real situation, then you need to, to, to prepare yourself prior. You need to get those packages prior to, um, to proceeding with the, with the installation. You download the packages when you have internet connection into your laptop, to some directory, and then you can package them into an ISO, for instance, and then um, just have them with you. So here, I will launch a container. Let it let 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 call let, let us call it offline, and then I will disable um, on the networking. I will disable external access for that container. So this will create a container real quick on my local machine here. So the process of creating this uh, container is quick because I have the image already uh, on the local cache. So it will just create real quick. So when I issue LXE list, I have this offline container. After a few seconds, it will get IP address. Mm -hmm. And then we will disable um, networking on that container. And then we'll create, let's, let me just create another one quickly. Galaxy launch. An online one. So this online container is it's just helping us to prepare ourselves, prepare the packages that we need. At, uh, prior to installing them into the offline container. So let me just check now. Yes, the offline container is launched and it has this IP address. And let me go to this page offline SSH. It's the 10. It's, it still have networking right now and I can ping internet, say Google DNS and it's responding. So it's online, but we can disable that. Editing net run configuration, and then <clears throat> we disable it here. Activation mode. We're just deactivating that interface of pseudo net plan. Bye. And since I've applying these will throw me out because I did connect to this uh, instance with SSH and the interface is deactivated. So that's why I'm now out. And um, I can list with LXC because of the remote LXC configuration here, but I can execute into this container offline bash. And then this container now doesn't have internet at all. And if I check uh, networking, notice that, well, the interface is here, but it's down, it doesn't have internet. And if I ping Google like before, Google DNS like before, it is not, it is not reachable. I've disabled internet completely. Now, the online one is, I think, created also. And it has this IP address.4. So as I search, Let's go to the online tab and let's search that for. So this is the online container that we will now prepare ourselves, prepare our packages and stuff, which we will install on the other on the other end. So here, 
what are the things that we need to set up our DHS to? One is we need to we need a snap. We need to snap. Sorry, we need to get snap packet there because um, normally um, LXD is a snap packet. Even if I list snap packages here, snap list. We do have LXD. It comes with a standard install of Ubuntu, but on our offline server. I'm going to assume that we don't have snap by deleting the snap package that we have right now. Snap list is going to have LXD. So I'm going to delete that. Snap uh, remove LXD. So it's going to delete LXD from this system so that we have to worry. We have to worry about even setting up LXD. You assume you are on an environment where you don't even have LXD installed and you have to worry about that. So right now, after, after deleting Snap, we can list the packages we have. And for sure, we, we do not have um, LXD what, like we had before. So commands, LXD commands, like, like even listing would not work because Snap is not installed. So here we have Snap. Um, the way uh, Snap packages are, are um, bundled is that an app will have all its dependencies bundled together into one Snap um, file, so that you don't you don't have to worry about you know how you will get all those dependencies together. So when you have a, a Snap package, that means you can you can um, you can um, you can install it and it will just run because it's bundled with all its dependencies. So, and it offers a way, Snap package management offers a way that you can download a package. And here, because this server is online, we want to download a Snap package of, for, for LXD into this, um, this instance by issuing Snap download uh, LXD. This will download LXD um, LXD package, but it did not install. If I wanted to install, I would issue snap install LXD, but I just want to get the file with me, um, which is you, which we will use to, to set up LXD on an offline environment here. We've deleted LXD, that means we need to set it up. And we don't have internet, we would not, even if I issue a snap install LXD, it won't work because there's no internet connection here to just wait and wait and wait and it will not do nothing. So online server is just helping me to get the package. And then I will copy that package into the offline server and install. So this is downloading snap package, sorry, uh, LXD package. Yeah. And even if the server is air gapped, um, in, a, in a data center where you know you don't have internet, you will definitely have a way of connecting to it because how else would you be able to install an app? Either you will be uh, accessing it through SSH, but, but that network is just uh, doesn't really have internet connection. However, you will have that link to connect to that server or, or um, a physical console. Maybe you're sitting uh, physically on that on that server. So that means you, you will have your packages into the um, package and, and put into maybe a, a flash disk. So that's, that would be a way of uh, distributing your, your package. However, I'm assuming that you will have a way of setting up your DHS to either with SSH or whichever the way. It's only that your server doesn't, doesn't have internet connection. So right now, the, those two packages, um, uh, the snap packages, uh, LXD packages are downloaded and they will be sitting somewhere here. Let me list and here they are. So these are files which you can copy into your flash disk or you can just have them on your laptop. So next step is just to copy this file here, this snap file minutes. here into my offline server. And all these really, these two are really containers and uh, I will, use LXC file command, the LXC file pool. I want to pull from online container, which directory are this file in? 
they are in this directory. So I'm pulling from home Kitito and what's the name of the file? This one. This directory, it's pull that. And the next one is, the next one is, um, is the stack packet itself. I'll just copy it into this directory. So I have them here. I've just used LXE file pool from that container, from this online container. This one doesn't have network also, it's disabled by default. So I'm going to push this file into this offline container. Yeah, but in real situation where you are sitting on a data center, you will use SSH, you'll copy that file over SSH. You can use rsync, secure copy, or whichever the way that you, you know, depending on the way that you accessing that server. So LXE file push, uh, I want to push um, this NAP package into offline server, uh, maybe into my home Ktito directory. It's now pushing, it's pushed. And then I can push the, uh, the, the, the assert package. And it's pushed. This one is very small. Can't even notice. Yeah. Let's get to the offline um, server and list. LS, the home petito LS, because this is where I pushed the package to. Yeah. Note that I tried to install Snap offline, I mean, online here with Snap install LXD, and it didn't work because it tries to get it from Snap uh, snapcraft.io. API, you know, and, and it's not working. We don't have internet here. So, but then I have gotten these files elsewhere. That means for this to work, you need to get your offline packet. You need to get those install packages and, and carry along with you. Now to install this, even when we downloaded uh, the file on the online server, we were given a few instruction on how we can install you know, after we downloaded the package, we they fed everything aside and snap, and we were given a few commands that you can issue to install the, the package. And one of them is ACK and then install. That is done. And then install yes, the package with this other command. So this tries to install snap, but from this file, this offline package means you can get you can carry that along to whatever server that you want and that way you will be able to set up your your snap it's five point uh, let's see lxd with snap so if i issue a command like lxd list it should work because now i have lxd but now installed purely offline It will take a while. Of course, our LXD um, container engine management engine here is not initiated, but then the command works. That means LXD is now installed. Even if I try to launch this, it won't work because it tries to get the image. Remember the steps that a container is built is that it gets the best image first, and then from that, it builds a container. But where, where is it getting the best image? LXC image, uh, sorry, LXC remote uh, list. It tries to get the image from cloud images, Ubuntu daily or here or here. <laughs> but then you don't have internet, so it, will, it won't work, it will not work. Even if I try this, it will not work. So that means also you need to plan prior uh, for your images. And I have a server with me. I have a server with me where I, I had installed DHS2. This is the server. It has base install of DHS2, just a very fresh install. It doesn't have anything. It has everything, um, but no data. It's just a clean install. 
So it has two um, containers that runs DHIS2 instances here, as you can see, and then it has Munin for monitoring and then Postgres database, of course, and then proxy, which is the gateway entry point to our, our, our infrastructure, DHIS2 infrastructure. So this is where I have like the base installed. And on, on this server, I did export LX, with LX, LXC uh, export proxy. With this, that means you're going to export proxy with all the, um, the installed packages in it. It, it, it gets that container um, plus all the added packages and it exports it, it, exports it into this kind of um, GCIP uh, file. And I have done export before. I have a few files here. I have HMIS, Munin, Postgres, Proxy. You can just export another one that we are missing on this list, which is uh, DHIS. Export just for demonstration uh, as DHIS, DHIS dot that dot GCIP. And it's and the export process will start. And as you can see, it's exporting it into this file name. So this is just to prepare yourself. And then you'll have to figure out a way of getting these uh, exported files into the offline server. And we've talked about that before. So for this to work, you need your network environment on the on where you're exporting your DHIS2, it needs to match LXD network environment on where you, 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 you will import your DHIS, your, that container that you talked about, we are talking about. And that means your network, LXD network here, and LXC, right now we've not initiated LXD, so it will not show us anything. There's no LXD network. But if we initiate LXD here, it needs to match you know, at least be on this subnet. And while this is still exporting from, this, from the server that DHS2 is working, let's now set up LXD profile here with LXD in it. And gonna go through this uh, quickly. Let's say you want to want to give this uh, to GB. No. Yes. For our network to match, then it has to be LXD bridge one. And then subnet is 172.19.0.2.1 slash 24. I'm just ensuring that it matches what we have here. Yes. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. So we've initiated LXD here. And that implies that the network is will be available now. And, and for sure, we have the network created. It's created. So even the storage is created, LXT storage list, it has to be here. Um, yeah, and, and even the profile. So that means when we get the when, when this export is complete and we get this export to this server, we can import it and it will just um, be running everything that we need. If it's a Postgres image, it will have everything, all the packages with us. Yes. So these images I had prepared before starting this call and I have them here. I actually exported on this working DHS2 server and um, I have them here with me. Yes, we have them here. So I'm going to push Postgres 
into the offline server and then import, import it into a container. So LXC push, LXC push, uh, Postgres, um, it's file Postgres into offline server into my home directory. And it will just copy it over the network. It's not even over the network, it's copying it with LXC command because I can connect to that uh, LXD instance uh, over the network, over the... Yeah, so this will copy Postgres, uh, exported Postgres plus all the packages in it bundled together into that container, um, sorry, into that uh, offline server. And we are on online, offline, yeah? And if I list here, you will see that Postgres is coming. Uh, it, the, this file is, is actually growing with time. See, it's 398, 417, it's growing because the copy process is ongoing, as you can see. So once we have this file here, then we can import it into a container because we have installed LXD offline and then we have set up our environment that doesn't need internet. The initiation of uh, this initiation of LXD doesn't need internet. And then what are we missing right now? We're just missing uh, containers. We just want to import those containers right now. And this is 89%, 90% done. It will be done in a few. Yeah, it's done. So here on the offline server, we'll have this Postgres. And I can say, I can, let me just check the storage first on this server with the F minus H. And as I had, I had uh, thought, it's actually 10 GB. So I'm going to increase this um, storage. It's a container, LXD, if I go to, it's a container and it created it with the default uh, 10 GB. So I need to increase that because I wanted to host other containers. So we need we need storage space. Let's see list offline is here. This offline um, is now is is having the only only 10 GB of storage. We need to increase that. Well, you might get uh, to ask why we having this um, network interface. But notice that it's not the same as these other interfaces. You know, the IP addresses are, are, are run, they're actually on different separate masks. This is the address of the container, the, the bridge container inside that um, offline host. But then it doesn't have a way that it can communicate to this host. And if I even type in do dot one, I will not be able to see because it is it, it just belong to that container. It's inside that container. And if I can ping, I can ping this, I know because it's linking to the host network. So this is a different network. It is for container network in, inside or, or container environment inside that um, uh, container, offline container. So to increase this um, for that container, I'm going to use LXC config defined override. I'm going to override all offline container with, um, and the device that I want to override is root. And I want to give it say 50 GB or 60. So it's overridden. That means if we start, if we start this, it will have um, more storage. You can see now up to 60 GB. LXC Start offline. I know we're going to lose connection here. Yes. Let's just connect it. And once it started, we should be able to connect. Uh, it started. Let's connect back. Uh, mm -hmm. There we go. So we are able to connect back. And if we issue DF minus H, we should be able to see more storage and that's that's true. Unlike before we were only able to see uh, 10 GB. So that means we can launch, we can import our Postgres container comfortably. It has more storage now. 
and we put it on home KT2. Yeah, here it is. So LFC list has nothing now. Hmm. And this container, this server doesn't have uh, internet. I don't have internet, but I can import, import. From the tar file that we have here, Postgres. Yeah, it's now importing. So even though we don't have internet, this container is going to be imported, and we will we shall check what is inside that container. Everything that is in it. So this is for demonstration, but whenever you're faced with this um, problem in real life, then you need to prepare this Postgres container, DHIS2 container, and have them with you, either in, in your laptop or a flash disk or whatever. They are just files. So you need to, to have them in whatever environment that you will be setting up your DHIS2. So it will import. And we can even, uh, as it is importing, let's again push another container, which is HMIS. Let's see, file push HMIS. So you can restore even two containers. You're pushing to offline. In real life scenario, you either use AppSync or whatever where you're connecting to that server. Offline server, it's imported. If we say LXC list, now we should see Postgres and for sure it's here, only that it stopped, let's start it. Hmm. Yeah, while we were also talking, having this discussion, I, I, I started exporting DHIS from a live system and it is now exported successfully. Listing contents here, we should see DHIS somewhere and for sure, yeah, it's here. So that means this file, you can take it along, you can move up, you can walk along with it. You can just go everywhere, everywhere with it and, and restore into any system, even though it's it, even when it is offline. Yeah. And um, I guess Postgres is started now. Mm -hmm. And for sure it is started. Notice that it comes with everything that exactly how it was on the working system. LXC list, it was even uh, the address was 2.20. And here on the offline, it is the same because we wanted it to really match the network, the way network was on the source and here, just to, you need to prepare so that you don't have conflicting networks because exported container comes with its setting. And the setting that it comes with is the, is the, is the Ethernet zero device configuration. Because if we say LXC config show, show Postgres, Extended, you notice that it has Ethernet zero and the address is dot twenty. So when you export from the other end, it comes with this configuration. So you need you need to make sure that they they do match. So now we have Postgres, but does it have all our packages? Does it have does it have Postgres installed in it? Let's execute into it and and check. We are inside. Mm -hmm. Now this is inside Postgres container and we can check ports that are listening and see Postgres is, is, is listening on 5432. It's, it's actually installed and it's even listening for connection. And we can try connecting to that Postgres and see if we have databases that were there even from the um, from the source where we got the image, the, the container export. And we can issue PSQL. 
uh, switch user postgres and the command that we want to run is psql uh, yeah and we can list the databases that we have here and as you can see we have dhis we have hmis you know we these were the the databases that were actually installed on on this system because we had two running dhis2 instances and these databases that you see here are their corres you know they correspond they correspond to the those running dhis2 instances so this comes with everything that means if i get an instance here into this host if i restore this dhis2 instance with um, lxc import import hmis and start it it will just be it will just run because the database is is here with is here and, and restored into that postgres container and everything is just um available So it will import that container the same way Postgres was installed. Mm -hmm. So this is where I was. Go I got the the packages. It is it, it it's a server that has um that has internet, and I use the tools to set up this environment, and the tools are in this two server tools deploy. You know, I just ran like sudo deploy.sh and, and Ansible uh, was able to, to, get a, to, to get the whole environment set up. And then when once I had these, what I have done right now is just to export these containers into the files and then imported it into this offline container. Yeah, so this uh, is still importing. And the tools, normally the, the Ansible tools are running there. This is how I set up whatever the containers that we have here. I didn't do it uh, manually. So while still, well, this is still importing, I also thought of um, in future automating this process because as you can see, this is still manual. Uh, I'm doing export and import manually. So in future, I'm thinking of uh, even um, maybe incorporating this into our tools. Uh, it's the import is completed. Let me just list. It should be stopped. Yeah. So we can start HMIS. So it will start in a few. Yeah. So this is how I set up these tools. It's using Ansible, and we don't have to wait for this because already uh, tools are set up. Uh, and I don't think we still need this server. It was just for demonstration, so I can close this up. So right now this has everything and um, our container is started. The Tomcat, uh, the instance container, sorry, should be started now. HMIS. And we can even check if Tomcat is running. And it's not running. Let's try starting it because it's supposed to, it's supposed to, because from here I can ping Postgres, I, I guess. Assume, yeah, we can we can connect to database. Uh, channel CTL minus follow unit Tomcat. Maybe it's still starting. Yeah, maybe it's still starting. Yes. So this will start and it will have everything that DHIS2 instance had from this, uh, this other side. Yeah, so it is still starting. So once it started, we, sh we, we will see that it's, it's, it's going to be listening on port 8080. Hmm, yeah. 
and it, we shall try even accessing it right now. Any question up to that point? Comments? You know, I didn't, maybe I wasn't watching carefully enough, but um, did you set the IP address when you imported the image or is it picking the old IP address or is it just picking a new one with DHCP? How does that work? Um, the so reason why I ask is, is because on the Postgres container, there will be mm. firewall rules and pghpa.conf rules. Yeah. So what, what really happened here is that when, when I exported container from the source, it, it exported it plus its configuration. That is the um, Ethernet zero IP address configuration. And when it restored here, it tries to use the, the configurations that were there before. Which, which was, um, because even right here now, uh, inside this container right, right now, uh, let's see, list. We'll have uh, those firewall rules. Let's get to Postgres. We we'll have firewall rules, just exactly the way it was on the other end. So it checks everything the way it is. So that is why I made sure that I preserved the IP address configuration, the network configuration on this destination, this offline server to match whatever I had on the source. Because yeah, the export- that's, that's, yeah. that's something for people to watch out for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tito, um, I, was, I was just looking at what Bob was asking uh, about the LXC publish. I think uh, they, they pretty much do the same thing. And the advantage of publish instead of export seems to mm -hmm. maintain the state, the state and the snapshot of the, of the entire uh, uh, container. That means if you move uh, a container that you use uh, using uh, publish, it will, mm. it, will, it will continue running. If you export a running container and, and, and you restore it on the destination server, I think it will continue running without you necessarily making any configurations. All the configuration and the snapshots and everything that is in the container will be pushed mm -hmm. to that uh, exported uh, container. Exactly. Yeah, but I think Stephen, as I thought about that some more, it's a slightly different use case. Mm. Uh, I think LXE publish is really useful um, if you're within a data center to publish images from one machine to another. But what Tito's actually mm -hmm. addressing is, bringing images from the outside to a machine that yeah. doesn't have internet access. And so okay. publishing probably wouldn't really help because then, you know, you still wouldn't have internet access. So you wouldn't be able to access them. So yeah, I think publish is great. And I think there's lots of, lots of uses for publishing images locally. But in this case, I think what he's done is the, the only way to do it. The only thing I would say, okay. Tito, is when you export the image, um, mm. you've got to be very careful you don't export snapshots as well. Otherwise, it can be huge. There's an option on LXE export, I think, which tells it not to export the snapshots. Yeah, I know instance only. I instance think. only, yeah. Because yeah. if you had a situation where you were using snapshots oh, or taking yeah. backups, then you would, you would be exporting all the snapshots as well. Yes. So I didn't... Uh, switch the put this switch on my environment because I didn't have snapshots anyway. Yeah. So however, in situations where you have say four, five, six snapshots, then you need you need to make sure that your exported file or container is very slim and you will have to say you want only snapshots. Sorry, instance only. And you can even um, you know optimize storage and, and compression and, and these other flags that you can set during the export. So back to um, back to the points that we talked about a few minutes is about export is that you can export a running container, you know, you can create an image out of um, a running container and then export that image and, and, and maybe restore that image on the other end so that you build 
you build a container out of that image, say DHS2 container out of, out of that image, you know, as Stephen, as Stephen has said. But then it, it will be a lot of work because anyway, at the end of the day, you need to move that file from somewhere else to here. I would prefer you just export a container, don't worry about creating an image out of it, and then just restore that container. It will be a bit simpler than exporting an image on the, on the on whatever you have it and then import it into an image on this other end and then create a container out of that image. It will be more work to do. Yes. We should be having something now here. Uh, Tito, you have... Tito, just a thought. Um, yeah. I know we're running out of time a bit now as well. But for the Tomcat container in particular, I mean, one of uh -huh. the things that might happen on a on a reasonably regular basis um, at this implementation site is people going to want to create new instances. Uh -huh. um, and there, I guess there's two ways that they have to do that. They're uh -huh. either, assuming they've got no internet, right? Uh -huh. They either can clone, so they can take an existing image and uh, container and clone it uh, or else they need to keep keep an image of a basically empty tomcat container and then yeah. just keep keep creating instances using that image exactly 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 that is a good use case of exporting a running container into an image a base container into an image where uh, where that base container has all the packages and then you can just spawn, you know, new containers based on that image. Exactly. Yeah. That makes sense. This is taking long to start, though. So I think what you need to do, Tito, <laughs> summing up, um, is it's quite useful to maybe create a short document with, with a shopping list of, mm -hmm. you know, what are the what are the files you need to bring with you um, mm -hmm. if you're traveling somewhere. Uh, where you know when you get the internet, you know won't have access to the internet. So you might you might need your Ubuntu twenty two zero four ISO image, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, you will maybe need your LXD snap package, mm -hmm. uh, and then you'll need some LXD LXC images or container exports. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and with that shopping list in mind or in hand, it should be possible for you to get the environment up and running um, without internet. Exactly. It's a completely so, different question on whether that's a good idea or not. Huh? Because, exactly. you know, <laughs> running, running Linux systems without internet and therefore without having the ability to, to do updates and upgrades is it's probably not advised. But sometimes the world gives us these challenges. Yeah, we face with we are faced with these um, problems, and and we don't have uh, options. Yeah, so I have not even talked about uh, how we could manage apt packages offline, but you can do that also. You just need to prepare yourself, prepare an ISO image that has all the packages that that are required for your for your use case. Uh, you know. That means you will yeah. have, yes? The other thing that's useful to think about, particularly if I think of, of um, a data center in an environment where maybe the internet is expensive. It's not that you don't have it, but it's expensive. Bandwidth is hard to come by. Um, you want to minimize at least the use of the internet. Then it can make sense to have a local apt repository because bear yeah. in mind you might be making you might be making 10 20 different containers each of these containers is going off looking to get apt packages um, uh -huh. it it might make sense in an environment like that to set up a local i know you can you can set up a kind of caching apt repository where mm -hmm. at least the repository is only um, updating once and then all the local containers can make use of that uh -huh. that's something i've done. i done many 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 years ago but um 
it's also something to consider if you're if you're in a bandwidth constrained environment even from a security perspective it could mean then that uh, whoever's managing the firewall will only allow outgoing connections from the app repository but won't allow any of the other servers to have outgoing connections mm. so it's something something else to look at yeah exactly yeah we actually the time is up but we, we will we will maybe explore also the how we can manage the apt packages in future because right now we've just dealt with you know moving containers here and there but this server as you all saw did have internet and we managed to set up these two uh these two um containers and they're up and running yeah so unless we have questions concerns uh, comments I think yeah, yeah, I think this is a very good um, use case, and especially for those uh, deployment scenarios where, like like Bob has indicated, the connections are either restricted or you know because of one reason or the other, it's not there. Mm -hmm. And yet maybe uh, we want to start doing some support to customization and the like as they try to figure out the connection and the like. I think this is a very good use case. Maybe, um, as you said, the automation and the maybe in, in putting it as part of the the other tool would be an, a, a good one. But also packaging it maybe some way um, as an option so that someone can easily just get that uh, maybe that like like the base uh, containers like okay. so that I can just download it and move with it and then I just go and start it up on, on a server and then I continue from there. Yeah, we are, even, we are even having a discussion with Bob, and when when we realized that if, if you are to really manage your images, your your LXC images images that way, then why don't you anyway use Docker, because that is what it's meant for. Yeah, but but you see, also the the ease of use is another thing. Docker is good in one aspect, but also not everybody probably is as conversant with it as possible. I think they use using it might be more complex than Alexi, because I think Alexi is kind of direct and the like. And uh, of, of, of course, it's still a good option, but we, we would look at um, uh, maybe making containers or, or base containers that runs on, 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 on various supported versions of Ubuntu. With their, with their, with their, with all their thing, and then, oh, and publish it for for maybe download on the on, on the DHIS to maybe GitHub or so when someone wants a twenty two point zero four, I just go and get that offline mode for twenty two point zero four, and then I put it on the server. I just turn it up, and then everything is fired up. Yeah, I think I, mean, it's, I think it's, it's not a bad idea, Stephen, but maybe, maybe an easier way to do that or a more manageable way to do that because you see if we start publishing the images then we have to make sure that they are up to date and all the security packages and things are, um, but what would be quite easy to make is just a short little script to do mm -hmm. that so yeah. you know to get the latest ubuntu to to run tito's ansible stuff on it and then to collect yeah. all the images of it or in fact yeah. um yeah i think actually publishing images it becomes a little bit of a nightmare i think it's the same nightmare that that the team currently have with publishing of docker docker images is that once you've got the thing published then you're kind of responsible for the security management of those images so in a way it's kind of safer to provide the scripts to create your own image rather than just putting them up there for download. I don't know. We'll think about it. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Because so right right now we have scripts that creates creates containers for you. So means we need to add something um, or some parts that export that uh, those images into say um, package them into one file for, for yeah. all those. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, a routine to say how to take this installation and. Pack it up in a bag and take it somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
So, no, I don't good. Thanks, Tito. Maybe a suggestion for for the next one. Um, I'm just thinking about. I mean, me, I, I I followed what you were doing, and I can understand because I'm quite familiar with all the commands and everything. Um, but maybe for someone, and I'm sure Stephen the same. For people who are maybe less familiar, they might find this style of of going through the demo a bit intimidating. Uh -huh. um, I think maybe maybe one or two slides and a, and a picture. Pictures are always good. You know, a picture uh -huh. to say this is what we're going to try to do. You know, there's the there's the there's the server, there's the containers, we're going to make images out of them. Um, now, I'm just trying to think what it's like for people who may be less familiar than me. That's a good point. But, but other than that, I think, you know, excellent presentation and, and um, good, good research that you've done around testing all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to go anyway. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Bob, and thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank bye. You. Thanks, bye. bye. Bye.